Hi, hello everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Resi Dharma. For those who are new to this channel, I am Dr. Ram Sushrut, MD Dermatologist from Hyderabad and I make lot of educational content on dermatology topics. Today's topic is on itch pathway and how we tackle itch in our daily life. So, if you like my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and share this video with your colleagues. Please watch this video completely till the end because at the end of the video, I am going to tell you regarding itch as a pleasurable sensation. Without delaying any further, let's get started. Itch can be defined as an uncomfortable sensation that can evoke a scratch response. Though initially it was thought as milder form of pain because it was carried by similar nerves and pathways. In current understanding, itch is considered as a unique sensation and it has its own nerves in both CNS and peripheral nervous system. Clinically, based on the pathology, the itch can be classified into four types. Pruritoceptive itch, neuropathic itch, neurogenic itch, psychogenic itch. Let me cover this itch pathway under following parts based on the level of the pathway. The first one is peripheral pathway, the second one is at spinal level, the third one is at CNS level and fourth we'll talk about sensitization of the itch in a brief. Itch can be triggered by multiple ways. Out of them, the most commonest ones are insect bites and irritants. Apart from that, itch can be caused by skin diseases like atopic dermatitis, psoriasis, urticaria and some systemic diseases which are related with the kidneys and liver. At times, drugs can also cause itching sensation. Though there are multiple molecular triggers, itch can be further classified into two types. One is histaminic itch which is caused by histamine and non-histaminic itch which is caused by substances like proteases and cowhage. The cells which play a major role in itch sensation are mast cells, basophils, keratinocytes and immune cells. Upon activation by varied responses, the mast cells regenerate to release substances like histamine, serotonin, proteases and other inflammatory markers or cytokines that play a role in itch signaling pathways. This picture shows wide range of pruritogens which play a role in itch signaling. They can be toll-like receptors which are activated and substances like interleukin-33 and TSLP which are produced by keratinocytes. These can trigger itch. Coming to immune cells, more specifically Th2 type of immune cells that produce interleukin-4, interleukin-13 and interleukin-31 also play in triggering the itch. Last but not the least, as we already discussed, mast cells and its produced substances play a very important role in triggering of itch. C nerve fibers and A delta nerve fibers play a major role in transmitting the itch. Among them, C fibers are most important. Not only itch, they also help in transmission of vague pain. C nerve fibers have a very small diameter and are not myelinated. They can be divided into two types depending on the sensations which they carry. The first one is mechanoinsensitive C fibers in which are also called in short as CMI fibers. These are specific for transmission of itch. The other fibers are polymodal C fibers. These C fibers carry both itch sensation and also pain sensation. CMI fibers are unique for carrying histamine induced itch. So they display H1 receptors at their nerve endings. Whereas polymodal C fibers transmit both histaminic and non-histaminic itch sensation through PAR2 receptors which are present on their nerve endings. Other polymodal C fibers transmit poorly localized pain as we have already discussed. In this diagram, I show you how a itch neuron reaches the spinal cord. I have given orange color for CMI fibers and blue color for polymodal C fibers. I have differentiated 
with different colors of blue to differentiate each carrying polymodal C fiber and pain carrying polymodal C fiber. These neurons have their cytons at dorsal root ganglion and they enter the spinal cord at dorsal root horn. Now let's discuss each stimulus a little close to the spinal level before we go little deeper into it. Pain is one of the important stimulus which can modulate itch. During coexistence of both pain and itch sensation, interneurons which I have shown in brown color contain neurons which release inhi inhibitory neurosignals that suppresses the itch sensation and gives priority to the pain sensation. Let's now see how we tackle itch at peripheral level in our day-to-day -day practice. The first substances which we use for treating itch are emollients. Emollients help in maintaining the barrier function of the skin, thereby decreasing the penetration of the irritants. Most commonly used emollients are occlusive agents like liquid paraffin and humectants like urea. Coming to ceramide containing emollients. Ceramide is a substance which is made up of lipids that is present between the keratinocytes in the epidermis. So, in people who are deficient with ceramide, like in cases of atopic dermatitis, usage of ceramide containing emollients will help in maintaining the barrier function. Coming to colloidal oatmeal substances help in calming of the skin. They decrease the production of inflammatory and molecular signals that trigger the itch signaling. Inflammatory triggers of the mast cells and immune cells is dealt by prescribing topical corticosteroids and calcineurin inhibitors. If the pathology is severe, sometimes we use short course of oral steroids as well. Oral H1 antihistamines help in decreasing the production of histamine from the mast cells and other cells and help in combating the most commonest itch stimulus. Another way of tackling peripheral transmission of itch is by numbing the nerve fibers. This is done by applying local topical anesthetics. As we already discussed, pain decreases the itch sensation. So, application of capsaicin which is an active ingredient in chilies at lower dosages help in triggering the pain sensation which is very mild and help in decreasing the itch sensation. At the spinal level, the second degree neurons originate from the dorsal root horn where the first degree neurons end forming a synapse. They cross the opposite side of the spinal cord, go into the white matter and ascend upwards through spinothalamic tracts and spinoparabacal tracts. Now let's see the transmitters of each pathway at the spinal level. Let's first discuss the ones which we can tackle with medications, followed by the ones which are very important in transmission of the itch. Morphine is one such agent that causes itch sensation when given as spinal anesthesia or epidural anesthesia. Endogenous opioids which are produced in conditions with liver and kidney diseases will also trigger the itch sensation in the similar way. They act mostly by mu opioid receptors which are present on the second degree neurons. So in these conditions, use of drugs like naloxone and naltrexone decreases the itch sensation by blocking the mu opioid receptors. In some cases, usage of these drugs can abolish itch sensation but might trigger a pain stimulus. In such cases, usage of kappa opioid receptor blockers like nelfurafen helps in abolishing total pain and itch stimulus. Glutamate is one of the neuromodulators that mediate chronic itch. Usually in normal cases, glutamate is not alone sufficient for triggering an action potential that can cause itch sensation. But in chronic cases, when the nerves are sensitive, this can be sufficient for triggering an action potential. The secretion of uh, glutamate is calcium dependent. So by using drugs like gabapentin and pregabalin, 
which block the calcium influx into the neurons help in decreasing the release of glutamate and thereby decrease the itch sensation. Other important neurotransmitters which help decreasing the itch are substance P, natriuretic polypeptide B, gastrin releasing peptide which is in short called as GRP. Natriuretic polypeptide B further stimulates the receptors of natriuretic polypeptide A and further triggers the production of gastrin releasing peptide which is a major transmitter of itch sensation. That is how the itch gets transmitted in the spinal level. Now let's know a little about inhibitory pathways. The inhibitory pathways of itch sensation usually start from the parabrachial nucleus and paraaqueductal gray matter which are present in the brain. From there the neurons come downwards to inhibit the neural transmission of each sensation. These neurons produce substances like dynorphin, glycine and GABA which inhibits the activation of GRP receptors by GRP that is gastrin releasing peptide. Finally, we have reached the CNS level. The ascending second degree neurons of the spinothalamic tracts end at the level of thalamus and spinoparabrachial tracts end at the level of parabrachial nucleus. One thing you should not get confused is this parabrachial nucleus is the starting stage of the inhibitory pathways and is also ending stage of the second degree neurons of the itch sensation. From these sites, the third degree neurons send the signals to different areas of the brain. Most frequently activated brain region is primary and secondary somatosensory cortex of the brain, which contributes to localization of the itch, perceiving the in intensity of the itch and recognizing the itch sensation. The other important activated areas are cingulate cortex. Anterior cingulate cortex helps in analyzing the unpleasant sensation whereas the middle and posterior cortex help in motivation and perception of the sensation. Insula also recognizes the unpleasant sensation which is caused due to itch transmission. Prefrontal areas of the brain are also acti activated and they help in decision making. Finally, the stratum, the motor areas and the cerebellum help in generating a scratch response. Sensitization. Sensitization is nothing but a phenomenon in which normal triggers which usually don't potentiate a very huge action potential starts producing a significant impact. This is seen in cases where there is chronic itch. In these cases, there is release of certain inflammatory mediators and also neural growth factors which help in sensitization of the nerve endings to take an itch stimulus very fast than usual. This happens at all the levels, even in the periphery, at the level of the spinal cord and also at the brain level. Coming to the question which I said. So coming to the question which I said that I'll answer at the ending of the video. Is scratching addictive and does it cause pleasure? The answer is yes. Scratch response not only elevates itch sensation but also causes pleasure. It was found that the pleasure derived from scratching was directly proportional to the intensity of the itch. It is also found that the pleasurability varied from on scratching different sides of the body. So that's it. Hope you have understood everything about the itch sensation which I have explained. If you like my video, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and share this video with your colleagues. Thank you.